How are you? I am from England. What part of England are you from? London. Mike Brown here, Editor-in-Chief of Interesting Engineering. We're here at CES 2023 with Robert Knight. Robert, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Robert, can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what we're see, here to see today? Uh, okay, hi, my name is Rob Knight. I am a designer of humanoid robots and I've been making robots for ooh, over 30 years. I have a bit of a specialization in hands and I'm particularly interested in visual dexterity. I want robots to be able to pick things up and do useful things with them. And I want to encourage as many people as possible to do that. So this hand, in fact, is open source. It only costs about $300 in components. And if you have a printer, you can make one yourself and get involved. Excellent. So we can use this to, uh, alongside the sensor, we can control the movement of the, uh, of the hand. And, uh... Absolutely. So for CES, I've done a demo using Google Media Pipe, which detects the hand positions and translates them into angles. But within the next year, I'll be working with some larger companies. And the aim is to produce a simulation to real control system. So the, model, the hand is modeled in a physics environment. You can train it virtually to do a task, and then the control code can be put back onto the real machine. So it allows you to train much more rapidly and um, without damaging hardware, which is still an important consideration in robotics. And the real aim of that is to develop a community because if you look at the history of robotics, a lot of money has been spent and it's all failed. It's not produced anything useful. I'm not convinced it can be done in a classical way because of the amount of trust we're going to have to be able to place into the machines. But if you're going to build from the ground up, we're going to have to find a series of applications that allow it to become self-sustaining. Someone has to find the application that we can achieve with the present levels of technology that will generate money to get to the next step. And if you have hundreds of groups looking, that is a much more likely thing to happen. So that's really my aim at this point, to get the tools to allow people to do the experiments so that someone can find the path through. Because we have this obvious vision of the future, right? In 20 years, 30 years, some horizon, the robots are everywhere, they're doing all the jobs, and like the Jetsons, we've always had this fantasy. But the reality of how you get from our present level to that point is gonna be a series of steps, and it has to be self-sustaining along the way. So can you also tell me a little bit about Zozi, who we have here today? Sure, okay. Uh, so Zozi is a social robot with a hyper-realistic face, and it's really exploring how robots and humans can talk and communicate in a very natural way. There's, again, this possibility in the future that you're going to want to be able to talk to your machines in a very natural way, and you want to say, you don't want to have to detail every little thing. So you want to say, if you say clean the house, you just want it to clean the house. You might have shown it once how you want things to be, but you don't want to have to keep going over and over things. Or if you want advice, if you want to know something specific, you want to be able to phrase questions and for it to give useful information. So we're seeing this a lot with the chat, online kind of robots you can ask questions when is such and such a film showing what's the best way to get from a to z google maps will do that for you but in a more general purpose thing general questions it would be helpful in some circumstances to be able to talk to the machines whether or not everyone will want to do that i think is a is an interesting question i'm more a kind of tap pads and uh, have a set of instructions say clean my house at this time do it at this point do a schedule just on an ipad but some people might want to talk to them so more sort of natural language interaction with the robots. Uh, in terms of the real world applications, we mentioned there about cleaning the house. Uh, <laughs> uh, so for receptions, I mean, you know, at a place like this, if you turn up and you don't know where you're going, um, then you could ask, how do I get to hall so and so? Is there anything interesting that I should know in this area? I'm interested in these things. Can you recommend something? That requires a real level of context awareness, a real level of natural language processing. Um, and that's kind of the state of the art which we're showing here. Excellent, right. And is that also an open source design as well as part of No, no, that one's completely proprietary. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. So, uh, um, yeah, as we're looking to the future then, it seems like uh, all of these designs could potentially have a uh, major impact on the world around us. Who knows which one, right? I mean, there's, there's lots of ideas. Gazing into the future is a very risky business, but it does seem that something fundamental is changing. That's excellent. Well, it seems like a really exciting development in this space, and we look forward to hearing more about it. And, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Great.